Washington Samuel Tyler founded his business on the philosophy that his products were not an end in themselves, but means by which his customers could complete something useful and profitable. This simple notion became the building block of the successful business Tyler founded that continues to thrive today. Leaving his imprint on the screening industry more than a century ago, Tyler was born in 1835 in Cleveland, Ohio. A descendant of a Connecticut family, Tyler returned to Connecticut at a young age to receive an education. He even worked at a textile store in Hartford for a few years, but with the work putting his health in decline, Tyler made his return to Northeast Ohio and set sail on a course that impacted screening in the aggregate industry for a century to come. By his mid-30s, Tyler founded a wire weaving mill originally called Cleveland Wire Works. The company, beginning with just 11 employees, was rebranded as W.S. Tyler in 1872. The company flourished despite its small size. It originally produced woven wire cloth for garden fences, flower lattices, and elevator linings. But Tyler was an innovator. In 1910, he introduced the Tyler Standard Scale Sieve Series, a scientifically designed testing series that later became the basis for the development of the ISO standards used in particle analysis. Tyler developed the hook strip for screen tensioning in 1916. He also saw a grand opportunity in vibrating screens. In 1917, his company produced the first fully mechanical vibrating screen, a development whose effects still reverberate more than 100 years later. Tyler also died in 1917 leaving a company that had grown over a period of 45 years to 500 people. But Tyler's innovative spirit remained a staple of W.S. Tyler's objectives as the company moved forward. The company's high level of customer service continued as well. While Tyler upheld the notion that successful businesses should generate a profit, he also firmly believed it must give customers their money's worth. Back in Tyler's day, this approach made W.S. Tyler a standout. Tyler's company continued to innovate and grow long after his death. In 1930, the Tyler family built a factory in St. Catharines, Ontario. And by the mid-20th century, the family added a production site in Mentor, Ohio. W.S. Tyler also purchased the Niagara Screen Patent and developed its first four-bearing screen, the Tyrock. Hover and Boker purchased W.S. Tyler in 1998, and Washington Samuel Tyler's name lives on through a number of innovations that are fundamental to the company's product line today. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, just in case it wasn't mentioned, uh, we're one of the sponsors today. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to use this opportunity to congratulate Jean Fischer, Manfred Freisler, if it's okay if I pronounce it the, the German way, because I'm German as well, uh, and George Sidney for their lifetime accomplishments and their induction in the Pitt and, Quart uh, Pitt and Quarry Hall of Fame. Your contribution to our industry is well appreciated, and I'm very proud to accept this honor on behalf of Washington Samuel Tyler in line with great personalities like you. As I mentioned, my name is Nicholas Haver, and I'm one of the owners of our family business, Haver & Boker, back in Germany. The connection of our company with W.S. Tyler goes back over 100 years ago, back to 1910. At that time, we had the first loose contacts uh, to exchange our experience in wire weaving on both sides of the Atlantic. In 1958, we started our joint venture between Haver & Boker and W.S. Tyler, called Talinter, which even exists today. We eventually tied the knots in 1998 when Harvard Boker acquired the W.S. Tyler Company with its two locations in Mentor, Ohio, and in St. Catharines, Ontario. It had always been my grandfather's big dream to one day acquire the W.S. Tyler Company, and it makes me very proud to accept this honor today. In 1872, as we've heard before, Washington Samuel Tyler opened a wire weaving mill in Cleveland, Ohio, with a focus on quality woven wire screens, elevator entrances, and other wire products. 
Soon he expanded his product line to test sifts and sift shakers. In 1916, Tyler developed the hook strip for screen tensioning, a concept that even today is widely used in our industry. In his last year, shortly before he passed away, Tyler produced the first fully mechanical vibrating screen box. It is hard to not be impressed with all the innovations that W.S. Tyler and his company in the years after his passing have brought to our industry. But what impresses me even more is Tyler's customer first approach. As he was known as an upstanding and determined man with high business and moral standards, he always wanted to offer a product worth their money. I found a note from my, grand, from my great grandfather, Fritz. In 1928, he had traveled from Germany to the United States and met representatives from Tyler. They explained to him that customers who had spent 40,000 US dollars, huge money at that time, on new Tyler equipment would save $1,000 a day compared to the old equipment. Return on investment in just 40 days. Equally important as the customers were his employees. It is reported that Tyler developed strong relationships with them to build loyalty and thus ensuring the company's success. Both Tyler's drive for innovation, as well as seeing the employees as the company's strongest asset, are values which we live today. We are honored that the founder of our two companies is joining this distinguished list of innovators. We are very proud to celebrate with each of this year inductees and support their continued passion for innovation. Thank you very much.